And if the living has access to the universe in your head, then you can come up with uh, all kinds of interesting stories. But it doesn't really go directly to the heart of the question of what is it that is perceiving. You know, when, wh- where is that thing? Well, and I don't even, there's actually not even in principle any way to do an experiment to cleanly separate the two. I see. So, so for instance, with the reincarnation research, if just because you have some kid born somewhere who says, oh, I remember my life here and can tell you all about it, and you go and verify it, you're saying, well, he might just be accessing uh, backwards in time, accessing the, the living memory of that person when they were alive or something like that? That's correct. Okay. It's probably not a uh, coincidence. Wow. It's probably not a coincidence that... Um, the number of reincarnation cases occur in proportion to the belief of reincarnation in the uh, in the society. So India has a lot of them right. because it's sort of embedded in the, uh, in, in the in the society itself. In which case, um, awareness and, and consciousness to some larger degree that I don't have words for almost certainly doesn't stop at the level of one person's head. It probably in- includes lots of people's heads. There's some larger awareness or consciousness. Uh, that probably has the equivalent of thoughts and intentions of its own. So you can imagine that a society might have something like a, a societal mind, uh, which every so often it, it desires at some large scale to, um, to confirm societal belief. And so a child will be born who is predisposed in some way to uh, to have early access to other people. See, what we don't know with the reincarnation stuff is how many little kids have a sense not of someone who died and they can verify it, but have a sense of someone else who is alive somewhere else and they have no reason to go verify it. You know, talking about their imaginary friend, mm. well, maybe some of them are real. It's just a you know, we we don't know where to go look. Makes sense. Okay, so when you were just talking about the societal mind that that maybe ha- that has a child born who's got a predisposition to verify the kind of cultural myth, mm-hmm. now that was sounding like a kind of consciousness that's not necessarily located in a particular brain. Um, that's right. So how that does requi- that? Yeah, that uh, would require a. Um, a sufficiently complicated physical structure to maintain recursion. And this is where non-locality becomes important. Uh, but before you even go there, you can, there's, there's a, a much more pedestrian form of this, which is uh, like uh, Teilhard de Chardin began to talk about in terms of the Internet. You know, what, what do you need to create a conscious world, uh, an organism the size of the whole planet? You need billions of circuits that are constantly passing information that has an enormous amount of recursion and it keeps reflecting on itself all the time. Well, that is the Internet. Mm. The Internet is driven by lots of intelligent things called humans. And there's an enormous amount of memory and information. So I mean, it doesn't take a great leap of insight to imagine that this electronic membrane that's, that's slowly covering the Earth is like a tissue. It's like a, a nervous tissue, and at some point it becomes aware, like mm-hmm. any sufficiently mm-hmm. complex tissue becomes aware. So that's that's like a conventional view of turning the world into a mind. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the other view is that uh, if there's also non-local connections among this, it, it makes it much, much richer in terms of its connectiveness. You don't no longer need the Internet as the only form of connection. You have mind-to-mind connections, in which case... Lots of minds, which appear to be separate, at a different view of physicality, are in fact not separate. Okay. In which case, while I can access a tiny little piece of Mars when I draw my attention to it, that maybe if you have a billion people all thinking about Mars, that that large collective thought can you simply quote see or experience uh, uh, more of Mars simply because there's more more to access it a larger thing that can, uh, can that can grasp it. But me as an individual would not know that. It's only the large mind that would in some sense know that. Now here's the language is beginning to fail at this mm-hmm. point because it's, it's hard to 
talk about what what a world mind or a societal mind might experience. So, and we can only project on it our own personal sense of what it means to experience. But something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what? So, how? Just on this, this being the last point, how how is the progress on this front? Are you finding uh, in terms of? Winning over the hearts and minds of the mainstream, so to speak, uh, are, are things have things progressed since you wrote the Conscious Universe, for instance? I think so, but but mainly in the sense in in the, in the medical world, there's been a really significant change hmm. as a, as the medical world has embraced spirituality more and more. The openness among uh, medical schools and younger medical younger people in, in medicine itself. Are much more open to this stuff. They love it. Um, so that's that's one giant change. Not even just that. It's just spirituality in general. Mm. The, the studies that show that um, people who have a strong sense of religion or spiritual connection with the world are healthier. Yeah, sure. So I mean, there's a lot of psychosocial interest in this, and people who are open to that tend to be more open to these sorts of things as well. Mm. The second thing is that that the book acted in some respect as a kind of a ticket. Uh, to to gain entrance to places that otherwise might not have been able to. So I've had the opportunity to give many talks at many technical uh, and scientific venues. And when and when I do that, it, it becomes very predictable. The talk is always standing room only. The talk, and we're talking about people here who are all highly trained scientists and technical people, mm-hmm. or sometimes physicians. So. That's the nature of the audience. Eighty uh, percent of the audience will find it so fascinating that they'll go, you know, they'll, they won't let me leave for asking questions. About ten percent of the audience will be hostile, and, and you know, will be the type that sits up front and has to jump up and ask questions constantly with a certain nervous ring to their voice <laughs> because they're, I mean, they, they feel like they're being physically attacked. And then there's the the other ten percent uh, just kind of goes away shaking their head because they don't know what all the fuss is about. So the bottom line is that that uh, a very large majority of technical audiences are very very interested in this when they get a chance to hear uh, not only somebody talk about it who's talking from a scientific perspective, but what I usually do is present for at least thirty minutes just data, one experiment after the other. And showing the the accumulation of data in those different paradigms, mm. that's what tends to convince scientists, and that's why the the story that can be told now about is this real or not, it's very powerful. It's just that you need some scientific training in order to appreciate why it's powerful. You know, like it'd be like saying if you were trying to. to uh, to get a, a, an audience of non-technical people all excited about the uh, measurement of the charge on the electron, you know, so you can mm. go through all the, the details of it and come out with, well, look, we know to nine decimal places exactly what the charge of the electron is, and people will go away and say, well, wh- who cares? What is that about? <laughs> Why does that? What does that mean to me? Sure. Well, as it turns out, the entire modern world depends on our knowledge of this, and you know, there's. That would just be a limitation in understanding the why it's such an important thing to know. Right. All right. Well, great. Thanks so much.